Hey guys, how's it going? Marsworks here, and today, welcome to another episode of the Manchester United Career Mode Season 2, Episode 31. We actually have only the two games in this episode, but they're two magnificent and huge games. So important for our season, it's ridiculous. I mean, arguably, you could even say that this game maybe could be a little bit more uh, important to the next game, which the next game itself is going to be a cup final, and obviously that'd be great, but the cup competition that we're in right now, the Champions League, would be a huge, huge victory. But we have to go up against, of all teams in this group, there's Real Madrid, there's like Barcelona, there's PSG, there are so many huge, huge teams that we could be playing. I mean, but in the end, we ended up getting Bayern Munich when I would have thought we'd have gotten a bit of an easier draw to start off with. But no, we're playing quite possibly the hardest team in the game. And this is on Legendary. This is quite possibly the hardest game that you could ever have to play. But we get off to a flyer with a Ricardo Rodriguez strike in the top left-hand corner. He snuck up forward. Beautiful little behind the behind the back little heel layoff from, uh, I believe it was Wayne Rooney or Artem Dezuba, who is playing in this game, by the way. And yes, they're still going at it with Bayern Munich. They're one-touch passing, moving off of the ball. It was ridiculous stuff. I try to pass to the guy right in front of me. Instead, it selects Ricardo Rodriguez, and the turnover results in a goal. Costly. That is exactly what Bayern will do, punish you. And really, it's quite annoying because that's not even the player I was trying to go to. I definitely said I'd make a note of it. As we see Schweinsteiger having a shot, going for that top left. Nearly scoring an absolute belter, but that was the first half. Only one, only a goal apiece in the second half. And again, a cross in that was headed backward to awaiting uh, Lewandowski, and it just sat there for an eternity as my defender stood around and did nothing about it. It was, uh, it was just annoying to watch. We've got Shakiri in the game playing against his old team, whipping one into Pogba and assisting in an equaliser. And of course, it's Pogba, quite possibly the tallest man in our team. He's on the end of the header, exactly who we wanted. Brilliant stuff there. But again, more crossing from Bayern. They were just doing it all night and it was working for them as they pick up a third goal. We keep taking the lead and then conceding and then equalising and then letting the lead slip yet again. Still, Rooney and Iturbe, who's now been substituted into the game for the pace that we need from him. And the low cross in a Rooney and a beautiful strike. Just a bit wide. Another equaliser on the cards. Just couldn't make it happen. Their defence, they were actually starting to pour numbers back as well. So getting them on the counter was almost the only way, but a shot blocked, and who does it fall to? Only another Bayern player, perfectly for Thomas Mueller, and he sticks in the uh, fourth goal for Bayern today. I mean, defending against them, I thought we defended quite well, but really, some of the goals that they were getting, crosses in, the headers that were just going right over the back to loose players, they were just going to pop it into an empty net, and then some of the turnovers as well, even that final goal, we actually got in the way of the shot, and it still somehow rebounded right back to another bloody Bayern player, and he just taps it in, or not necessarily taps it in, but he finishes, and it was a very frustrating first leg, but there is a second leg at home, and I have to put in one of the best performances of the series in order to then progress into the quarterfinals, past the best team in the really in the game I mean let's just admit it but now we have a huge game once again the only two in this episode but this is the capital one cup final this is the first time I've made it to a cup final in this whole series we of course won the Champions League uh, last season we won the Community Shield the start of this season if you want to call that a cup or a shield or a piece of silverware, then I guess that counts. We could technically do the double then this season, which would be great. And if the Premier League happens, then if we somehow would have caught, if we somehow catch Chelsea, then maybe we could even go ahead and do a treble. If we can somehow get past Bayern Munich, maybe even the quadruple. I don't even know if that's a thing. And again, this is all keeping in mind if winning the Community Shield actually counts as like a cup win or whatever. But still, we now have the Spurs team. Their lineup's going up again. And we look at some of their players, some names that are a little bit... Uh, oh, well, you wouldn't really expect to see them in the starting lineup, but especially players like, for example, uh, Asue Koto and Yedlin, who apparently have their overalls have just soared. Asue Koto, I'm not even kidding, is about an 86-rated left back. I mean, that can happen to some players in career mode. But still, we are starting this Capital One Cup game. Immediately, you will see a few attacks from Tottenham because they were the ones that got the advantage early on. And they were working the ball well. Lamella trying a chip shot over De Gea, but he's a tall man. And it takes a little bit more power, a little bit more oomph than that to get over him. But still, fast passing, catching them on the break. We get Jezuba with a shot. Blocked. Force of Pogba. A bit of, um, a bit of role reversal from the Bayern game, actually working in our favor. Pogba pushing up forward and nearly knocking one in, but unfortunately, again, just wide with a toe poke. A corner saved again from Michael Vorm, who is in for goal today. Not 
uh, Hugo Lloris. Whether he's been transferred away or not is yet to be known. But Raphael on the shot would have been a cracker. We get the fullbacks pushing up for those types of shots for the corner, but it doesn't really work. Sometimes it gets very, very close. And that is a poor, poor tackle from, I believe, Americ Laporte. And we see that not, obviously Soldado not happy. And that is, neither was the referee, a red card. Gone in the 45th minute. In the half, it took less than a half for us to go 10 men down. We now have to play out the rest of this game with 10 men. And the free kick, thankfully, going right to De Gea. And the situation does not get any worse for us. But that meant at half time, we needed to, uh, of course, make a sacrifice. And in the end, I've gone for, I did end up going with uh, Paul Pogba, keeping a center attack in midfielder and moving my central midfielder, which would be uh, Angel Di Maria, pushing him in as well, as we see starting off this second half with a foul. But again, there were a few fouls because we see more set pieces being taken, more attempts at free kicks. Lamella trying for this one again, and or Ericsson going for that one and putting it left as well. But still continuing with Ronaldo, trying to get him in the game because he was extremely quiet. Yedlin must have been doing a good job on him. But either way, falling to Di Maria, gets a shot off, a little off target, and not an awful lot of power on it anyway, but still continuing on. 68th minute, still no goals yet. Still going. Pritchard with a shot, hitting the post, probably the closest to have gone in today, but still nothing. Emenike has been subbed in for Soldado now. Vertonghen pushing up forward the centre-back. Emenike through. A brilliant save from De Gea, keeping us alive. The clearance go right to Vertonghen. Instead of shooting, he laid it off for Emenike, who had another shot and was blocked again. Now the 90th minute. Yedlins on the ball. Pushing forward was Rooney. He made the tackle. It's a 2v2 break. Yedlins fast. He's not going to get away from him. The through ball to Zuba with a chip and puts it wide. That would have been the game. He's just got to get it on target over the keeper, and that would have been it. We would have won the Capital One Cup, but is there time? Five minutes of stoppage time ends. That would have been it. Right from kickoff, the referee would have blown the whistle, had that goal gone in from Tezuba, so he now owes us big time. It was a hell of a chance wasted. Unfortunate stuff, but continuing on now. Extra time. It's a great through ball, just a little too heavy, and Lamella going in hard to De Gea, not picking up any cards for that. Bloody, bloody disappointing. But Asu Akoto, the left back, pushing up forward even harder. Emenike going up. He was, of course, substituted into the game for Soldado. And it looks like going for the header, of course, being contested by Luke Shaw. He's gone down awkwardly and he's taken himself, he's taken himself out. He's done something to his knee. He would be substituted later. But the second half of extra time, I make my final substitution. Ander Herrera on for an absolutely bugging Angel Di Maria. And Vertonghen still pushing forward the center back. Gets up and scores the first goal with less than 10 minutes to go in extra time. And Spurs finally make a breakthrough. The finally first goal of the game comes after 110 minutes. And now we are in trouble. Backs against the wall. 10 men finally get exposed at the back. And now we've got to push. We're all buggered. We're all trying to get this final goal. To Zuba trying to break through a wall defense. They're pushing all the numbers back. Rooney's there. Iturbe with a chance. Shoots. Gets saved. Falls to Rooney. Rooney with a little chip. But it gets in the goal anyway. Just getting there. We see Iturbe with a shot. It gets saved. And in the effort to try to switch player to Rooney, it still ends up making a chip happen. But the chip still manages to go in. Top left-hand corner. I don't know who it was. Maybe Capu or someone, Kabul, who tried blocking the shot. Couldn't make it happen. It nestled in the top left-hand corner from a chip. An unnecessary one at that. But we get the equalizer so, so late in extra time. And now this game is only going to be settled one way. It always looked like it was with penalties. And I've substituted a few relatively decent penalty shooters. But this man is our best. We've got Penaldo stepping up. The first man has got to be our best player to take this penalty. It's a little bit outside of his comfort zone. He doesn't land it perfectly in the green. So he plays it safe and just tries to get it in the net. And that's what happens. But next up... Emmanuel Adebayor versus a brilliant De Gea, who's been great all day. He misses the shot. De Gea goes the right way. Would have saved it anyway, but that is a brilliant start. And now Manchester United with the lead. Rooney right in the green, and the keeper doesn't even move. Perfectly places it on the right-hand side of his keeper. So we, Manchester United, with the advantage. Can we make it a two-goal advantage? The keeper again, De Gea going right. And Lamella is putting it right through the middle. But now it's Artem Dezuba's chance. He nearly could have won the game for us. And that's a beautifully placed, not only in the uh, pressure meter, right in the green, but it's perfectly placed to the left as well. Keeper went the right way and saved it. Paulinho with the starter with the chip. And it went right to De Gea, but it's gone a little above his head and somehow has not saved it. He didn't move. I saw the, I saw the chip, 
but still nothing. It's Herbo right in the green and perfectly placed in the top left hand corner. Vorm couldn't get there, went the right way. And now this was it. Spurs needed to score or they were gone. Vertonghen, their goal scorer. Shoots, saved, off the crossbar and that's it. Manchester United are the champions. They have defeated Spurs in the final in extra time and penalties. In the 111th minute, Vertonghen put one past them. It seemed done, but Rooney equalizes in the 118th minute and they are the Capital One Cup champions for 2016.